All right, so let's talk about regulation of complement. And there's two ways that we can control uh, complement. And this is in the plasma. This is on the host cell surface, on your cell surface. All right, so for plasma, I'm going to go ahead and distinct these two here. Um, from C3, controlling that, and then C5, and I'll do the same over here. C3, and then C5. So for C3, I'll do that in gold. Uh, in the plasma, we have things that are designed to turn it on, to increase the production, increase its cleavage rate, and then things that are going to turn it off, to decrease its cleavage rate. The one that turns it on is known as factor P, aka preparedin, as some people call it. And my PI actually argues that uh, my book is full of crap and that this is what actually initiates the uh, parts of it. But for the purposes of the book, what it says is that factor P is going to shield the C3 convertase uh, from being degraded by other enzymes. So if you're blocking C3 convertase from getting broken down, it's going to keep doing just that and it's going to result in more cleavage of C3. The two things that are involved in shutting off C3 uh, conversion are known as factor H and factor I. Now, factor H, let's go ahead and circle this up here. Factor H is going to just inactivate your C3 convertase. I just called it conase for short. So C factor H is going to just inactivate it, um, whereas factor I is also going to bind to it and inactivate it. But factor I also is going to undergo, I don't know whether it's enzymatically or through just uh, conformational changes, but it go ahead and cleaves C3 convertase to a innate form known as IC3B. Now, that may look a little bit familiar, you may be thinking that that's something that you've seen before, uh, but what this is, is this is going to do two things. This is going to be further degraded, further, I'm just going to say further breakdown, breakdown, so I'll just go ahead and say it rather than drawing that out there. So for IC3 beta, after it's been acted upon by factor I, it's going to be further broken down by your cells, by my cells, by my receptors on my host cell. But if this is on a pathogen, this is not a convertase, but what this is, is this is going to be an opsonin for macrophages with a complement receptor 3 and complement receptor 4 undergoing receptor-mediated phagocytosis. So that's how we control in plasma complement 3. So let's talk about complement 5 uh, in plasma, how we can control C5 activity and convertase in plasma. But where we're at here, we're in the plasma. We're not, not on your surface, but in the plasma. So what these do here, they're known as clusterin. If it ends in IN, you should know it's a protein. I sincerely hope you know that. J factor and S protein. Tell you what, this is one of the points, and <laughs> we're beyond the point where the names told you what they do, and we're just using these weird abbreviations. But, anyways, what all of these guys do, all three of these in the plasma, all right, they block the formation of the anchor for the for the membrane attack complex. So I'm just going to say that they blocks C5 beta through C8. This is also known as the I'll just draw it out. Also known as the anchor. Really hard to draw that. I don't know why. Anyways, blocks that landing site for the drill C9 to come in. Now, on the host cell membranes, for C3 regulation, I'm going to keep my color coordination that I've got going on here. For C3, we have two, uh, I guess, components known as decay accelerating factor, because it accelerates the decay of C3 convertase, and then membrane cofactor protein. 
I'm not gonna not gonna write those out, but I, I just said them, so write it down. Um, the other thing that we have that's really unique, uh, and it is kind of an exception, is complement receptor one. Um, this is kind of reserved to strict cells of the immune system, but it works nonetheless. Now, what all three of these do, the way that all three of these work is really similar to the way that factor H worked. Uh, MCP more because it's going to be uh, playing a role in exposing things for factor I to come in. Um, but what is important about all of these, I'll just go ahead and star all of them. Factor H um, and then factor I not so much, but they all are components of sialic acid and so this is something that's unique to just our cells and we use that to protect ourselves from being our cells from being destroyed by complement. Pathogens such as Streptococcus pyrogenus or Staphylococcus aureus are able to use sialic acid. So and Streptococcus can use sialic acid to protect themselves by from complement activation. And that's, that's a very, very, very useful tool to have. So the last thing that I wanted to talk about for, for regulation of complement on the host cell membrane is C5. So the way that we can regulate host uh, C5 activity on the host cell membranes is by means of something called homologous restriction factor and a molecule called protectin sometimes known as CD559. I, I don't know why we use stupid numbering like this, but I like the word protectin because its name implies that it's the protein that protects your cells from complement activation. And just how these over here block the anchor, both homologous restriction factor and protectin are going to block the drill. Which, in case that wasn't familiar to you last time, that is the C9 polymer that results in the rupture of the membrane. So, cool. Here is a, a diagram showing how preparedin acts to stabilize the uh, alternative C3 convertase. Basically, it just binds here, and this, with this binding here, uh, degradatory enzymes that would like to block it and, and munch it on it can't get into it. They can't bind to the convertase and inactivate it. So, it, the convertase will keep doing what it's doing. This also shows a diagram here, same page from the book at least, uh, where it shows that factor H will bind, factor H will cause a conformational change that's going to expose this site here for factor I to come in, which is going to cleave it to IC3 beta. And again, if say this was on the pathogen surface here, so this is going to be an opsonin, uh, we're just concerned with controlling the amount of C3 conversion that's taking place here, but if this was, say, on one of my cells, this IC3 beta was going to be further broken down. And this is here showing on a human cell surface, um, basically the decay accelerating factor binding to uh, the C3 beta fragment there and causing conformational change that's going to release the factor B beta subunit, right? Uh, and then membrane cofactor protein binding to um, basically the alternative C3 convertase which is going to result in a conformational change again allowing factor I conformational change allowing factor I to come in and to cleave this molecule into IC3 beta and if this is on it's kind of cut, cut off for some reason human cell surface this is going to get further breakdown so I'm going to say right here further break down into a, a less soluble form. I'll just go ahead and also include here that this IC3 beta is a receptor, for, it's a receptor site for complement receptor 3, complement receptor 4, opsonin. So, cool. This diagram here shows protectin. Um, I don't know why people would ever call it CD59. I like that where the name lends itself. That helps it easier to remember. But if you wanted to, you could call it this. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and what this is showing here is that um, what this is mainly do is it, it blocks the polymerization, inhibiting the polymerization. Oh gosh, that's getting kind of messy. Let's try that again. Inhibiting the polymerization of C9 to form the membrane attack complex. Uh, 